Alright, we're in the Peak District this week. Look who's joined me on this one. Out with Paul. Good to get him out and get a smile back on his face. He's enjoying his scent. Yeah. Till it rains. <laughs> Aye, till it rains, yeah. So yeah, we're in the Peak District. Just above Edale at the minute. Looking out above the uh, Vale of Edale. So we've parked down in Edale, of course. We've just come up the nab. We're off up to Ringing Roger just up here. And then we're going to cut over to the uh, northern side of Kinder. Sealstones area, somewhere around there. And uh, find a nice spot for night. We do a good forecast. So we thought we'd make most on it. Ah, well, we've just come along from the top of Ringing Roger, which is back down there. Quite windy on there, so we're trying to get some uh, shots stood on rocks, but it was blowing us about a bit, so we moved along a little bit less windy area. So we're just at the top of Golden Clough, and uh, we talked down at Car Park, me and Paul, about water. We've, uh, we've fetched water with us, but usually this little clough here is running with water. I've collected water here two or three times when I've been up this way and it's absolutely bone dry so it's uh, a good job that we fetch water with us have about three litres on me that should see me enough we are crossing the top of Blackdown Brook but I suspect that'll probably be a bit same as well be pretty, pretty dry we've had no serious rain up in Peak District for quite a while now so all cloughs and that there's just no water at all Well, for many that don't know, from the top of Golden Clough, the narrowest crossing across Kinder Scout Plateau to the Northern Edge Path, there is a path. Paul's just been saying it's his favourite pastime, just yomping more, and I just kept saying to him, My faith, there is a path. See you now, look. <laughs> and we're on it, I told him. So, yeah, we're on the path now. Northern Edge Path just here, see the top of Blackdown Brook. And we'll not be far, no, we'll not be long before it in hit seal stones. So we've just hit top of Blackdown Brook. That's looking back down there. I might have said before I've climbed up this uh, maybe four or five times. It's a lovely scramble up certain places. And although it's dry at the minute, Halfway down there, I've just been saying to Paul, there's a, an absolutely cracking uh, uh, waterfall and a plunge pool that you could have a little swimming down there. Absolutely stunning. One of them nice uh, walks up onto Kinder Plateau that you can do up these cliff climbs. Well recommended. Uh, so as we've been saying as well, this water situation, usually this is one of the places you can rely on for water. Top of Blackdown Brook. But that is usually running down there, that usually a good flow. I mean there's a bit of bit of still water just there but I won't want to be relying on that. That'll be really dark peaty. So it is a good job we fetch water with us on this one. And then I think we found a spot. We've had a little walk about and it's actually a place where we've camped before. There's a nice little area there. And uh, I think it was when Paul had the Telemark Nordisk Nordisk what it or something? Telemark yeah, te Telemark, Telemark too. Nordisk too. And uh how we're in the little Alp kick soloist that I had there. So it's a nice little area. We'll get sun going down over there, good sunset over that way. 
and we'll get a good sunrise over that way. It's about half past seven now, I think. Still easily two hours of sunset, so I think we're safe to get pitched. Right then, so as we've got set up, I'm going to have a quick run through uh, what my lightweight summer setup is going to be because I've had quite a few questions. So, as you know, I'm not, not one for going into depth with stuff, weights, etc. If anybody wants to know all that, what I'll do is I'll weigh my pack weight and every, every piece of individual items and I'll put all, all that lot in the description. You've all seen my new shelter Elite, it's the Mountain Laurel Designs Cricket. It's more of a tarp, not a tent. Really enjoying using this at the moment. It's a fantastic little shelter, really does well in wind as well. So again, new piece of kit is this is the Atom Packs More 50. Abs again, absolutely love this pack. Wish I'd have got one of these years ago. Full of features and I'm enjoying using that. First thing out of the bag is the shelter, the tarp. Then what I do is I've got this, which is a piece of polycro which I've cut to size and all I've done is in corners I've put some Gorilla tape on there in a square and I've put some pieces of bungee on that'll then get pegged out in there with aluminium shepherd steak hooks from Valley and Peak so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that up now so as you can see that's the polycro ground sheet down also that's as a vapour barrier stops any damp coming up through onto my mat. So once I've got that polychrome ground sheet down, next start is this 3mm piece of foam mat. That goes down up top of my polychrome ground sheet. It's just a, it does add a little bit of insulation value but it's more for protection and out poking through that polychrome ground sheet and, it, and, and possibly puncturing my mat. That's a 3mm foam mat down, it's also non-slip, so it'll also help your mat from sliding about. So the next thing out is my Therma Rest Neo Wear X-Lite. And what I also try to do when I'm packing my bag is, think of things that you're going to be getting out first. Say if it's raining, first thing you want out is your shelter. Once your shelter's up you can start getting things out like your mat and everything that come after that. So I'll get this blown up next. Here's the Therma Rest Neo Wear x -Lite matting on top of the 3mm foam mat. So next start comes my Alp Kit Cloak bivvy. Really nice little lightweight bivvy that. You can see from the size of that. You can probably squash that down to the size of maybe a large apple. Really good piece of kit that is. So that goes in next. So that's the Alp Kit Cloak bivvy in place. Which will then take my quilt inside the... So the next start it bag is just a, a few other bits that I put in between my quilt that goes in bottom and my other stuff that goes in top. So that is my snap bag from Treadlight Gear, the Treadlight Gear snap bag, they do different sizes of them. That's called a weekender, it's a perfect size for your dehydrated snap meals, them sort of size packets. That is my electricals bag from uh, Valiant Peak. Nice little insulated bag from Valley and Pete, does a cracking job of keeping your batteries, your camera batteries warm and your, your power bank etc. Wash kit, in there I've got toiletries, face wipes, toothbrush, toothpaste. Again that's in a, a little, uh, I think they call that spinnaker, it's not like a Cuban fibre stuff, it's a different material called spinnaker or something like that. But that's from Treadlight Gear as well. Next up is my cook set, that is my complete cook set, it's a Alpkit Mighty 900. In there I've got my storming Norman Cone, I've got my Speedster stove, uh, Mef's burner and my little sea to summit collapsible mug. That is my Exped pillar, as you can see that's nice and compact, nice and lightweight. I'll blow that up when I've got my quilt in there. So then inside here I've got a, a pack liner, what you actually can buy from Atom Packs as well. I forget what it's called now, but it's, it's basically like a bit of a, a plastic bag liner. So this is it, it's a little bit crinkly, a little bit noisy. 
But it does a good uh, job of compressing your quilt and your other me, spare clothes and everything at the bottom of there. Compress it down, just roll the top up, tie a little bit of a knot in it and it keeps everything nice and compressed in the bottom of the bag. So first thing out of there then is, that is a Exped Schnozzle bag, which I keep all my spare clothes, extra layers in. Does a really good job of uh, compressing them, it's a roll top and you can roll it down nice and tight, squeeze air out it, the uh, bit that goes onto your exped mats, and they compress down really nice and well. It's what I've been using for quite a while, that to compress my clothes down with. Next start is my down jacket. Uh, on this occasion, this is my Rab Cirrus Flex jacket, which is like a summer down jacket. I've got several other, other down jackets, also, so obviously through different seasons, getting into autumn, winter and that, heavier down jackets come out. So then the last thing in the bottom of here, that is my quilt, my Cumulus Tiger 360 quilt. I don't put that in its stuff sack, as I've just been explaining. I put it inside that pack liner in there, squash it right down at the bottom and it does a nice job of filling pack out at the bottom. So this will now go inside my Alt Kit Cloak bivvy. So there we have my quilt and my pillow all set up inside my cloak bivvy. Nice little cosy set up that which I've used quite a few times. I used it quite a lot last year this type of setup and I'll plan to use it a lot over this summer as well. Well that's about it then, that's a quick rundown of my summer setup or my lightweight setup should I say. That's about as light as I'll ever get, as you, you full well know, as I've said before, I'm not into all this lightweight stuff. Comfort comes first on me, enjoyability. So yeah, anybody that's got any questions, fire them into the comments and I'll uh, try and help you out with any queries or any questions. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to get the rest of my gear out ready now. I'm going to get my stove set up because it's time for a brew. Well, I think that's about best we're going to get out at sunset. There's a big bank of cloud drop there on the horizon that's uh, sun's gone down behind there. It's 20 past nine now. And of course we've had summer solstice last week so sunset's getting a little bit earlier each night. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> might be summer but there's a little bit of a breeze, maybe 12, 15 mile an hour max. And it's a little bit nippy on fingers. I might be putting gloves on. I think it's time we got this uh, brew on go. We're drinking this and uh, probably getting some tea on go. Paul's just around the corner there, we'll go and see what he's cooking up for tea. Paul's living it up tonight. What we're cooking tonight, mate? Um, <laughs> some sort of fried potatoes, asparagus. Got a slab of beef in here as well, look. Get a ribeye. Like Lovely. a sun Sunday dinner. Steak, asparagus and taties. Meanwhile I'm up the hydrate to snap. <laughs> uh, well we've had some beautiful colouring sky over there. Opposite to where the sun's gone down. It's uh, 5 to 10 low now. And it has got a little bit chilly in that wind. And my snap is just hydrating down there. Beef hot pot I think it is tonight. So I'm gonna get uh, tucked into that. So I'm ready for it. And I think I'll have another brew before we uh, head off to bed. Right, well it's nearly midnight now. We've uh, got a sense into the tent, but me and uh, Paul, we've had a really good chat there for an hour or so. Passed a bit of time on. We, we sort of didn't realise what time it was, so we had a, another brew on that and uh, time to retire to bags now for at night. See what uh, see what time sun rises in the morning. It's supposed to be a decent forecast tomorrow morning, so we might get up for that. So until then, it's now bedtime. I'll catch you in the morning.
Well, good morning. It's uh, 20 to 6 now. I set the uh, alarm for half past four. Sunrise we're at 20 to, 20 to 5. But a nice bit of colour in the sky over there, in the clouds. Nice bit of a sunrise. Done a few bits with camera and that. And now I've uh, got back in the bag for a bit because it's quite chilly out there this morning. It's got a little bit rough. Winds have got up. We've just had a little bit of rain. A few spots, but that's cleared. But yeah, it's uh, clouding over and it's pretty nippy in that wind. So I've got back in here. Get a brew and go a bit of breakfast. And I might chill out for another hour or so. Might even get my head back down and have another hour's keep. Good morning again, it's about half past seven now. And I, I did what I said I was going to do after I'd had a, a brew and a bit of faffing with camera this morning. I got back in uh, bed and had a, about another hour's keep. Paul's up now, he's doing a bit of filming and stuff over there. Yeah, we just had a, another brew and then a four along we're going to start packing a few things up and get off the hill. Hey, that's us, we're all packed up. That's where Paul was. That's where I was. As always, you know the score, we leave no trace. Been good to get Paul back out and get a smile back on his face. Enjoy that one, mate. Yeah, I did. Needed it. Good, good. So, yeah, that's another one in the bag. Nice steady walk back over Kinder Plateau now. From Northern Edge, back over to Ringing Roger, back down into Weedale. That's it from us, and I'll catch you up next. And I'll leave you with that view.